That's coming through at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya. You can also text in 22422. That's SMS line. Tell us your name and where you're texting from. Let's bring that up on screen and see what your comments are. Godi Baraza says the vetting of CS nominees brought out an aspect that has been safely tucked away from the public eye. The declaration of nominees net worth should be a platform on which government agencies can rely on to check if graft was practiced. Okay. We'll find out what Prof thinks about that. <laughs> Imasira Ima Cedric says it's just a PR process. No new ideas on how to improve the various ministries. Okay. Let's see what else you're saying here. Yeah, Mutai Obed says the vetting process is a constitutional requirement. We uphold the practice with all due respect. Okay. And see, Jaffet says the vetting of the CS nominees is a meaningless exercise. All the nominees will be approved by the committee of the whole house, irrespective of recommendations of the vetting committee. Kenya Kwanza has the majority in parliament. And Oringe here, Waswa, also says regular appraisal mechanisms must be in place to gauge the performance of each cabinet secretary and any other civil servant drawing packs from the exchequer. Those who don't meet the requisite targets should be barred from serving. Is that the way to go, Prof? Is that where we, the solution lies? <laughs> Regular vetting and performance contracts? In like fact, the private sector. In fact, performance contracts are there. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I, think, I think the CS and team must have actually uh, uh, signed them. Uh, but I insist that, uh, uh, for me, what is really important about this particular process is, is the nature of our democracy, uh, that uh, even if even if majority of these people uh, are ready, in fact, and we expect we expect the president to make the right choices anyway yep. in terms of um, of the basic qualification. Uh, but on the other hand, I look at this very public uh, engagement as also a conversation with the public that uh, you know our, our, we we don't just do our democracy in private. We are bringing these public officers to the public. They're able to, uh, you, you know, to be interrogated publicly. Yeah. They're able to engage in all sorts of different issues and different questions and so on. And for me, this is a wonderful thing. Yeah, because uh, uh, I remember again, uh, you know, discussing Galaxy TV, and, and, and that was about our elections. And also, this um, amongst the very few countries on earth where, you know, our election is there for everyone all over the world to actually see, you know, the the. Uh, the, the voting process itself, uh, um, the results, uh, they're there, the disputes in the courts, they're all enacted in the, in the, in the public domain. Yeah. And I think this is something that's very good for us, uh, uh, you know, as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and having said that also, yes, I mean, we may want some specificities, but remember also that uh, uh, these uh, cabinet secretaries, uh, as um, um, uh, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Cecilia Kirk has, has already highlighted, uh, they act collectively. And remember, the president can actually swap them from one ministry to another. Yeah. And they will not go back to parliament uh, for vetting. So, 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 so these, are the, these are the broader issues that uh, you expect that somebody who will be uh, a cabinet secretary is well vast yeah. with uh, basically that broad government agenda and, and can serve as yeah. a leader in, in several different functional areas and so on. Yeah, so, so these are things that, uh, that, that I think, uh, you know, those who are vetting must, must, must also explore further yeah. uh, to just demonstrate the level of leadership, uh, you know, that these particular individuals have. Yeah, because I, I feel, for example, because of the, the fuzzy nature yeah. of uh, the position of uh, the prime cabinet secretary, it enabled, in fact, for, for today's nominees, it, it enabled Honorable Mudavadi demonstrate that he's a sort of a fellow who can serve almost in every other ministry. Uh, while actually um, some, some cabinet secretaries did not have the opportunity, for example, to be asked that supposing you got into the Ministry of Defense or, yeah. or, or, or you are transferred you know, by, by the president to say Ministry of Water, uh, what would you do, do differently? That broader uh, view of, uh, of what uh, government does. Yeah. But I think anybody suggesting that there is a very public vetting, and I've said, is not just of the ministers. We do this for the, for the head of police, mm. uh, the IG. We do this uh, for, uh, for uh, you, you know, judges of, of, of Supreme Court. We, we do this, of course, for, for, for PSs and, uh, and others. This is actually an advancement in, in our democracy. Because before, 
you just be appointed uh, President Moy with all due, uh, uh, due respect uh, uh, for the late. Uh, during that time, of course, the constitutional thing would just uh, uh, announce that Trevor Mija is the new min minister for electricity. <laughs> and, and, and you're confused here. And when you walk out of the studio, you find cars waiting for you outside there. Yeah. <laughs> and the previous minister would have been dropped. And nobody had a clue yeah. why you had been appointed and so on. At least uh, this time around, the public have an idea yeah. of whom these people are and what they are able to do and what they're not even able to do. But on the other hand, of course, we must also remind Parliament that Parliament does have the power yeah. to actually advise the president when somebody is not qualified, when in their view mm -hmm. they've looked at this, at this person, uh, they've checked uh, the background and so on. Th their role is not just to rubber stamp. Yeah. Their role is to approve, and that also includes disapprove. Okay. They can actually tell the president that, yes, we've, we've reviewed your nom nominees, and uh, out of these nominees, we approve 20, and we don't approve two. Okay. And, and, and this has nothing to do with, um, with Azimio versus Kenya Kwanzaa. In fact, uh, it'd be quite interesting to see uh, a Kenya Kwanzaa majority parliament yeah. saying that, okay, fine, uh, disapproval. You are our leader, but yeah. uh, we think this particular one didn't meet, didn't meet the cut with very good reasons. Okay. Well, was it in hindsight the mix of politicians and technocrats? Will it add value to the cabinet, having played both roles, actually? <laughs> <laughs> um, in my view, it will, Trevor. Yeah. And, and it will in this way. Um, the, the role of somebody who is purely technical is a little bit behind the scenes as you take off. Yeah. You know, you, you are not too exposed to being insulted uh, like we, we did when we were in the trenches. Um, and, and, and so you're likely to be a little bit removed until you learn uh, the ropes. And even when you do, it is possible you may just want to keep your space and your peace because you're, you're, you're a bureaucrat, you're a technocrat. Yeah. But when you are a s smart politician, uh, look at um, Speaker JB, for example. Right. I mean, what has he not been called? in his life. What has he not gone through in his life as, a, as an active politician? So he's likely to face off with anybody coming close to him to defend the government agenda, to be able to defend his docket, to be able to... So, so, so I think that overall the combination is, is, is good. Um, it was a bit of a struggle, um, you know, last 10 years uh, because we were too many of us uh, being technocrats and therefore wanting to do things in such a methodical and calm manner that you are not shouting. But I think shouting is part of the game. Yeah. Wanjiko is saying, don't be deaf when you go there. Speak to us, tell us what it is you're doing for us and how you're fulfilling your commitment. So again, I've said it before, I think President Ruto, mm -hmm. um, having learned of the gaps or the failures or shortcomings of a purely technical mm -hmm. uh, cabinet, um, applied some genius stroke here. Yeah. And he's brought in a very good balance. And I think that uh, there will be sufficient noise. Yeah. Um, president Hul Kenyatta, um, uh, you know, the, the fourth president, did huge work. I mean, if I was to sit here and tell you the achievements in water alone, yeah. and I was hardly there for two, two, two years, two months, I supervised over 630 national projects within that time. 114 of them were completed yeah. within two years. I mean, if you move around town, whether or not now we want to introduce a conversation of road, do we eat roads, don't we? We will eat them finally because this is the route to market. Mm. A lot of infrastructural development. If you moved to other spaces, and I, I saw um, during the news uh, today, the irrigation where we never thought we can actually access water for irrigation. Very simple technology applied, uh, re responding to climate smart challenges, yeah. combining with agriculture. It can be, these things have been done, but were we able to be loud enough like politicians? Perhaps not. Mm. We tried, but you know, so, so it's, a good, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good position yeah. from what I think. But, but in hindsight, if you ever to write a memoir, what are some of the things you would tell your people coming in as CSs to avoid? What pitfalls would they avoid? You mentioned the first one that don't assume you know everything. Yes. Get knowledge from the rest of the yes. people. What else? Should they oh, oh, do, do, 
let there not be prefects, eh? because yeah. every, what happens is that right. when you are that level and you have people acting prefect or superior or inferior, right. or you've been taken to a small ministry, you know yours is not too important, those differences just kill teamwork. And you know now, this is a team of 25 people headed by the president followed by his deputy. Now, if we introduce such differences to feel like mine is the most important and therefore this, um, it kills uh, teamwork and therefore I would want to suggest a cohered team delivers faster, better, happier. Yeah. Because you remember, these people for five years, they are going to be forgetting a little bit of their domestic issues and home issues. Eh? There is hard work ahead. Mm -hmm. And therefore that is going to become home. So teamwork I would encourage quite a bit. Number three, I would also... Um, want to suggest because the cabinet minister is um, is accountable directly to the president i think that and, and and there's something that we must look at even as we are looking at the vetting processes and whether they are suitable or not the question of loyalty and trust by the president is so very important for you to be able to survive as cabinet again just saying the president in terms of being accessible to his generals mm. becomes very important because then you don't have to sleep with a, an idea that is good, that you have not found a place to take or you are not able to be cleared and just proceed. But importantly, please, guys coming in, carry Kenyans along. Carry them along even when you're doing, tell them this is what it is we are doing and this is the next plot that we are having and there is a failure here, one, because right now, we are struggling to be able to feed Kenyans, not of our own making, but there is a climate uh, uh, change impact and this is an implication. Carry them even when it's not always positive. Mm. Carry them even when you fail to fulfill all the commitment. It is important because what is happening, Kenyans have become very impatient. So that even you when, do, when you do one good act yeah. and you're not able to articulate and say it, we say the business of leadership is tell them, tomorrow tell them again. Yeah. The day after, tell them again. When you meet them again, be a broken record. Say it consistently. Then you are able to carry people along. And I think it, it, and, and it, 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 will be, it can be done. Yeah. Small little gains will uh, be done. Prof, is, is part of the solutions having them summoned on the floor of the house like was suggested and not just by the committees in parliament so that they can speak out a bit more on what has been done and the areas of failure can be addressed? Yes, I think... I think Trevor again uh, and, 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 and agree uh, with uh, uh, Honorable Cecily here that uh, that uh, uh, is important that uh, you know we articulate policy and, and like I was saying I mean it is a continuous engagement with the public saying this is what we see as a problem yeah these are we are fixing it and so on and to me that is something that, that must be ongoing and, and that's partly why whether we like it or not uh, the CSS must as leaders uh, you know have that political role of uh, communicating constantly uh, to to, uh, to the public. But having said that, again, um, the issue has been that uh, is that communication happen happening enough, yeah. in, uh, especially when it comes to elect, uh, relationship with elected repre uh, represent representatives, uh, as in members of parliament, as exactly were. Uh, and, and, and as far as I'm concerned, um, you see, I mean, we had, uh, we had the architecture of the constitution and uh, the way the different uh, organs were to relate. And now we we have the uh, the life of the constitution as it actually were, and and and, and the areas that that clearly needs to be improved. Mm -hmm. um, feeling that um, you know you are talking to yourself in this chamber and uh, and nobody will listen to you, uh, while on the other hand somebody is also working hard uh, the other side and nobody sees. Yeah. Uh, I think this is something that can actually be addressed. Uh, yeah, because the the, the the current provisions basically is that. Uh, you know, you are summoned to the uh, to the assembly uh, as as wherever as uh, a cabinet secretary, and uh, and then of course you answer questions within committees and so on. But but on the other hand, the, 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 I think they still need for that uh, more robust uh, engagement with the um, with the uh, with the uh, uh, I mean with the with, with parliament. Yeah. And the president has suggested that actually they'll consider amending those standing orders yeah. uh, to see how effective that can actually be. Okay. And it reminds me, of course, that was uh, under the previous regime, when we had the prime minister's uh, position, and the prime minister was always in the house answering questions together with his ministers and so on. Yeah. Um, again, I think that, I mean, the, some of this could actually add value okay. uh, to, to the way our democracy is done. Yeah, because while on, on the other hand, yeah. you know, we expect these different uh, uh, arms of government uh, 
uh, to be autonomous and independent. We also expect them, just like the cabinet, we expect them to work collaboratively yeah. for uh, to deliver for, for for the Kenyan. At the end of the day, the Kenyan the Ken Kenyan is just one person, yeah. and all they need okay. is to have all these different issues around their lives you know, resolved yeah. by government. Waziri, would it add value? Oh, it would add value um, for as long as it is really well structured and uh, that it is not a platform for which hunt. We've seen a bit of right. that happening. I would like to speak to the members of parliament and senate as well. Every year, a cabinet secretary is required to table a report on their achievements. Mm. I did that faithfully. Nobody asked to discuss that with me. Mm. Meaning, the parliament has a responsibility as well, just beyond receiving a report. They ought to interrogate the author, who is a cabinet se secretary, because that is where you articulate your achievements, yeah. your challenges, mm. and what you're planning going forward. Mm. So it shouldn't just be another document that you're depositing to fulfill Correct. what is required. So I think they have a responsibility as well. Um, back to what Prof says, my suggestion is that um, the issue of separation of power yeah. and accountability must be respected. Mm. Let us just say the three arms of government were created by us Kenyans through the right. constitution for each one of them to be able to met out their mandate. Mm. So this issue of groupthink or working together as a unitary state um, may not work if, if, we, if we do not maintain that separation of power because mm. one is checking on the other yeah. or the other is checking on the other. Mm. So, I mean, we have a very good institutional and governance architecture. Mm. It is for us to make it work and work well for us. Have we done that in the 10 years? We have been learning. Things have happened. What has failed? I think hold people to account, including yourselves in the media. Yeah. Um, you know, spotlight on who is performing and not performing. What are they still doing in office if they are not performing? You know, spotlight them. Let's so not just be time, one unit. Nobody touched the report that you give, give Parliament. Well, they were received. I mean, the register should they were received yes. all the time. But there was no interrogation. <laughs> well, there was no interrogation. Correct. So even, whether, if, even when I complain, and you know, this one now will go to the majority leader. It will go to yeah. the leadership of the House, it, not now to the committee. So if we also wanted it to be a little bit with the issues, would have taken these issues and said, you know, uh, three days, Minister Karioki, you'll be coming here next articulate for us what you're doing Correct. in this Correct. sanitation Correct. space. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Why have you not pushed from uh, 30 percent? Uh, you know, why Why the whole year yeah. you came and made a commitment this way? Right. You know, let's go beyond the exactly. performance contract. Mm -hmm. That has become another ceremony. Mm -hmm. And I see Honorable Mudavadi has a responsibility there because I think he's the one, if I recall what is in the executive order, he's the one who will also be looking at issue of performance. Yeah. Um, let's not do things for the sake of doing. Let's do things because we want a real impact yeah. and we want it now, yeah. if not yesterday. All right. Right. Let's read some, some of the feedback and then I come to you and close, uh, take closing remarks here. You've seen the first day of vetting going forward is going to run all the way to Saturday. Should there be a change of tack? I'd like to hear from you on your final thoughts. Let's bring up the feedback and see what you're saying as you wind up on this conversation. Try and squeeze in just about two or three or four of them. Nelly Chepkeme says there's a huge disconnect with policy formulation and its implementation in our country. Something that needs to be looked into. Okay. Let's see what else you're saying here. Ringe Waswa says regular appraisal mechanisms must be in place to gauge the performance of each cabinet secretary and any other civil servant drawing punks from the exchequer. Those who don't meet the requisite targets should be barred from serving. Okay. Let's see what else you're saying here. Babu Michael says I feel the cabinet vetting process is just a formality to blackmail the general public and the no, no nominees will be left out, even if they got tangible and serious integrity issues. The questions are asked, and whatever they answer, that is it. Okay. And last one here, let's squeeze in the last one. Owade, Eugene says, today's vetting should be a wake-up call that it is high time that Kenya seriously implemented lifestyle audits, especially among state officials. Prof, should there be a change of tack going forward? This vetting is going to go on for all the 24. Only five have gone so far. Well, I think uh, uh, yeah, Parliament needs to review what they've done today anyway, yeah. and, 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 then, and then focus on uh, you know, areas that, that want to improve. Um, my sense uh, is that that particular committee was not very coherent, because uh, again, uh, what one would have expected would, would be that uh, you know, the different members of the panel ask different questions that collectively give you a holistic picture. But uh, I, I really did, did not see that, uh, you know, come out uh, quite clearly. Um, but then again, a lot of the things that we're talking about, Trevor, here, uh, including some of those things that uh, um, uh, um, 
the president was suggesting issues are, are around, for example, reporting to parliament that uh, um, Madame Foma has, uh, has highlighted. Those things are actually constitutional. That, that's the interesting thing, and that's what I like, I'd actually wanted to add, that this one matter of, uh, of, um, of uh, cabinet secretary reporting to, to, to parliament, that's Article 153, yeah. four of the constitution is expected. But on the other hand, you know, we, we, are, we focus on the letter rather than the spirit of some of those provisions. And, and, and that is my parting shot, that actually, even on this particular vetting, yeah. we must, uh, the, the committee must take a step back and ask, why was it necessary? Okay. Why was it made a constitutional requirement? Okay. And how can that particular uh, constitutional requirement yeah. be met so that it doesn't just become one of those uh, regular interviews that you can do in uh, Bungala Wananchi, <laughs> okay. in Jivanji. <laughs> was it <laughs> closing the box? You know, um, I feel reasonably optimistic. Yeah. I, I don't think that, uh, and I can see what the audience is saying there, I don't think it will be fair um, inside two hours for you to make a determination whether I am competent as a cabinet secretary or not. Remember, uh, the president, by picking Trevor, the president already knows something about you. Right. The loyalty, the trust, your competence, mm. your, your capacity, yeah. your skills. Your, he, he has an idea, so it, it didn't just happen. That is why you are not there today. That is why Prof is not there today. Mm. So le let's, let's say it is a process. It is not an event. Today what we saw was an event, yeah. sitting. Now, does it stop you, the cabinet secretary, from being censored when you're in office? No. And that is where the biggest failure would be. So I wouldn't mourn too much, my friend, uh, who is raising the issue. Don't also judge one person appearing today for two hours. Right. Uh, you don't expect them to be a subject expert in matters uh, yeah. water, right. uh, in matters sanitation or irrigation or, you know, and even if they really crammed, of what use is it now? Mm -hmm. Allow them to go through the process. Mm -hmm. Let them, let Kenyans be carried along because that is what the constitution we give ourselves want of us. But we cannot complete a process of vetting a cabinet minister inside even one day. Okay. So allow them to go in, but let us be vigilant. Mm -hmm. And I want to believe that you, by the time you're getting the privilege and honor to be named a nominee for cabinet, in itself, it should make you not actually sleep. Eh? Mm -hmm. You should be quite restless so that you are going to try and work as hard as you really would to be able to deliver on the mandates in your specific ministry and as also as a collective body of cabinet. So it's not all lost. We have other mechanisms that need to be introduced as we move forward. That is why, again, I'm inviting the media. Please don't be cheerleaders. Hold public officers to account. Mm -hmm. You, the, ins the institutions responsible for investigation, please, again, don't clap when mistakes are happening. Do your work. You know, that's why you have been given that job. Mm -hmm. You, Parliament, Senate, do your work, especially Parliament. And, you know, we end up with a country that we don't have a spare country. We keep saying, so deliver for us. Exactly. Yeah. Take the baton from where we are handing it, or we've handed it over. Okay. Run and make a difference. Okay. That would be my, my, my prayer. Yeah. And to say that it is not all lost. Yeah. Uh, if the committee sitting, uh, like Prof wants to suggest, uh, wishes to review, I don't know what it is they are able to review within these very tight uh, you know, right. deadlines sure. that they yeah. have. But they still, we have responsibility to be able to check on what these people are doing, okay. uh, how they are performing, move away from public relations, yeah. hold them accountable and genuinely so on behalf of Kenyans because that is why yeah. Kenyans also voted for you. All right. Thank you so much for making right. time this evening. Honorable Cecilia Karyuki, former CS for Water Irrigation and Sanitation, and Professor Alfred Domenia, Urban Development Planner, speaking about the vetting of the cabinet. It continues again tomorrow all the way until all the 24 have been vetted. My name is Trevor Ombija. It's always a pleasure having you with us. Have a great night ahead. Bye for now.